Okay. Uh, May 23rd, 2022, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bible in a bar, Hobbs Island Pit Stop, Miles Wiley Albright, Huntsville, Alabama. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray that you make these know what you've shown me. Make us all teachers. Make us all hungry and thirsty. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Maybe I better cut my phone off. Okay, um, <clears throat> I have uh, something tonight to share. I, uh, Holy Spirit, please help me. Please help me. And I'm, I'm very aware, especially of this recording. Uh, I'm a big fan of recordings, teachings of all kinds. Uh, academic stuff, spiritual stuff, otherwise. And um, a lot of times new stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of those things. But so many times people, they start in the middle of something with a recording and they don't really realize that they're leaving people kind of high and dry because they're, because they're not catching everybody up not getting everybody on the same base, same spot, on the same page. Uh, and I don't want to do that. I want, if this tape is being shown in a thousand years, I want it to be clear. And so I'm going to, because of that, I'm going to back up and I'm going to tell some stuff that most of you will have already heard. Uh, but I, I cannot just presume that everybody that sees this will not need the introduction. Um, but I have quite a lot to share, so let me jump right into it. Um, and I'm excited to share what I have to share. Um, I have to make myself start at the beginning, but and not start with too much detail. But on April the 4th, 1995, uh, I had an encounter with the Lord. Um, had an encounter with the Lord and after a return from Toronto, the, 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 the revival up there in Toronto, the airport venue. And I was seeking the Lord, and he showed me that in Numbers chapter 3, verse 46, there's 273 firstborn that kind of stick out. It's the only odd number on this whole long list of numbers. It's a census. Uh, it's the kind of thing that drives people nuts trying to read it, put you to sleep. It's a good place for God to hide something if he wants to hide it. But there's, there's 273 firstborn who can't be covered by the Levitical system in, in this verse here. And when I hit that on that date, I asked the Lord, what was this about? And I, my attitude wasn't even good. <laughs> it really wasn't. But he showed me that in the last chapter of John, John 21, 11, <clears throat> John, uh, Peter is pulling 153 large fish out of the water by himself. And then on the next page, the next chapter, Acts chapter 1, 15, there's 120 Jewish people there meeting with Peter at the beginning of the church. So what the Lord was saying was the, the apostles at the end were made fishers of nations. These were large fish. The 153 large fish represent the Gentile nations harvest in the last days. God speaks of the 
in from the beginning. This is before this. The church starts out, it's all Jewish. But as uh, <clears throat> Ephesians 2.14 says, the, the Jews and the Gentiles put together the one new man. Uh, you add those together, of course, and it's 273. Um, and even Hebrews, Hebrews 12.23, I believe that's right, um, refers to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. And that's what that's about. And I thought that was really, really neat when I first found it, but I had no idea. I had a sense that, that, it, that there was a lot more, but I had no idea how big it was. And if you're hearing this the first time, you're probably going to look at this as we say down at the ranch, like a calf looking at a new gate. You're going to go, hmm, well, this math works. but it's huge. I've got several documentaries, tapes on the YouTube channel under Miles Albright uh, going into how huge it is. And that was a huge day that that, when that happened. Um, and I, I really can't go into to that and be able to cover what I'm going to cover tonight. Um, but, but I am going to mention some of the things tonight in order to be able to cover what I want to cover tonight. Some, there's some kind of amazing 273 things that happened that, are, that relate to what we're going to be looking at tonight. And uh, so look with me uh, to begin that with there at Numbers chapter 10. You're amazing that somebody would find something in Numbers. <laughs> it's one of the least favorite books in the Bible, partly because of all those numbers. So, um, in, in Numbers chapter 10, it's really an amazing thing. And this was a true encounter with the Lord when it happened. It's like I, 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 we were living in Baileyton. Uh, you probably know where. Uh, we were living at Baileyton in our home there. You know, Barbara and I were married. This was about 1996, seven, along in there. And I really just felt the Holy Spirit so much. We were in the living room. I said, here, Barbara, take this, read this to me. God's saying something to me, and I can't read it and download it at the same time. And, and it's the kind of stuff that you absolutely, you know, put you to sleep. Numbers chapter 10. In verse 14, it's talking about the sequence of the tribes as they marched in, in the desert. Um, they were in groups, basically, of three, uh, three tribes, one from the north, one from the south, one from the east, one from the west. And it says, verse 14, the divisions of the camp of Judah went first, and under their standard, Nashon, the son of Amenadab, was in command. Nathaniel, Nathanael, the son of Zuar, was over the division of the tribe of Issachar, and Eliab, the son of Helan, was over the division of Zebulon. And then the tabernacle was take, da taken down, and the Gershonites and Merarites, who, were, who, were, who carried it, set out. Okay, um, so that, this is about as dull as it gets, but I'm, I, she's reading this to me, and, and, I can't, and I'm, I'm just, she's calling out these numbers, and I've got a whole bunch of this stuff memorized. And so Judah goes first, and, and I first I write down Judah, and then I just start change over to Numbers. Judah was the fourth son. And then Issachar was, Issachar, I'm just going to abbreviate that, Issachar was, he was the ninth son. And I'm writing this stuff down. And then uh, Zebulon, he's next, and he was the tenth son of Jacob. And she just keeps reading it to me. And I'm writing this down, and uh, then, then it's uh, and, and then of course there's the it, it says Merariites and Gershonites. That was the Merariites carried the poles for the tabernacle. Uh, the pole you had to put up the poles first, you know, like you're putting up a tent, and then the Gershonites carried the fabric, you know, the cloth stuff to go over to make the tent a tent. And these two sets of people, see, Levi had three divisions. There was three sons of Levi, three divisions. Gershon, Merari, 
and then Kohath. So these guys carried the actual tent, and they were coming in behind Zebulon. So really, they represent part of Levi, two-thirds of Levi, and they were the third. They were the third uh, tribe, tribe number three. And then she just kept, it, you know, this is as dull as it gets, but my heart was beating a mile a minute. And she said, and then Reuben went next. Reuben is leading the next group. Reuben was number one. Gad is in his group. And he was the, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, Simeon was next. I'll be over there reading it. Simeon, Reuben was next, and then Simeon, and then uh, and then Gad. Gad was next, and he was the seventh son. And guess what? Uh, the last of the Levites come up. The Kohathites, the Kohathites again, are clans within Levi. Can they see me, uh, brother? Okay. Uh, the last part of the Levites, and of course, they're in the third tribe. And when I got right there, I realized what, why I was so excited because, and there's, there's more. The other, that's only about half the tribes. You've got six more. And so, what that's saying is God is looking at Israel from the God's view, you know, 30,000 feet or whatever, as they say. And he sees the 273, he sees, 273 represents the church. He sees the church inside Israel as they're marching across, marching across the desert just with the sequence of the tribes. And so 273 is embedded in, uh, right there, about plain sight, but totally hidden <laughs> until that day in probably 97 or something, 98. Um, so then, um, and without going into too much detail, you know, the 273 became, uh, a few months later, the Lord sat me down and showed me it's in its full manifestation. It is actually, the revelation is uh, 273 plus three, or also known as 276, because, you know, the Lord sent me down and he showed me the numbers chapter, I mean, Acts chapter 27, and that there was 276 on the boat, but three of them, Paul, Luke, and Aristarchus, are, they're the Levites of the New Testament, because of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, they, the Levites serve the priests, they were the priests, they were the servants to the priest, the church is the priest, but they're the Levites who serve the priests, and you never number Levites with the rest of Israel. So it's, it's 276, but it's actually 273 plus three. And Paul, Luke, and Aristarchus are allowed to leave the boat in Acts 27, three and go on the shore, which leaves 273 on the shore and three on the boat. I hope y'all can stay with this. I, 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 I need to tell you all this to tell you this other stuff. And anyway, so it's 273 plus three. Okay, so Numbers chapter 15. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Numbers chapter 15, I just turned past it. Yes, Numbers chapter 15. Oh, this is, talking about dull, this is as dull as a census. It talks about offering a lamb, a ram, and a bull. And, um, and how you do that, and it talks about the drink offering that you offer when you when you do those when you offer those three animals, and how you how you mix it up, and it's, it's that's important to me because Paul said twice in Philippians and Second Timothy that he was we are we're like drink offerings being poured out by the sacrifice of Christ. Okay, uh, he is the lamb, he is the ram, he is the bull on the altar, but we are there being poured out beside him in the with the lamb, you, you used a tenth of an ephah of flour and a quarter hen of oil and a quarter hen of wine, okay? And with the ram, you used two tenths of an ephah of flour and 
a third of a hen of oil and a third of a hen of wine, excuse me. And with the bull, you use three tenths of an ephah of flour with a half of a hen of oil and a half of a hen of wine. And you add all that up and guess what? It's 2.76. So right there, we are, the church is poured out. When we embrace the cross, we're, we're, our sacrifice is, is beside that of, of the Lord Jesus. I fill up in my body what remains of the sufferings of Christ, Paul said. And there's a lot of scripture really about that. So anyway, I tell you all that as a setup to tell you that here in this book of numbers, these things are, and, and if I, you know, God knows, but I don't think anybody knows this uh, or knew this until this, was, this came out. So really it's an honor and it's historic in my opinion uh, for these things to be taught. Uh, there's part of me that blushes to, to tell them because it's so obscure and so out there. But um, I have a new friend. In fact, my new friend calls me his uncle. And uh, he was going to be here tonight, but he's not, hadn't showed up yet. But uh, he's a good brother. Uh, he's also a Seventh-day Adventist. And he, uh, he's from um, Jamaica. And... Uh, he actually came out to, he didn't know where he was going. He just kept turning and turning. And he wound up at the ranch out there. And uh, he was looking for a place, he said, to pray with nature. And, um, and I, I gave him a tour. I put him on the Kawasaki mule and carried him all the way over to the Flint and the Tennessee. Let him wade out in the water. And anyway, we, uh, we got the full tour. Even showed him the duck dock dam. Uh, so anyway, it was a great time, and but as I, I've been meditating and praying for him, and and I'm trying to really get myself in the last, particularly in the last 36 hours. You know, Sunday after church, in the afternoon, is when I begin to really begin to focus towards tonight, Monday night, and uh, I want to I want to have something from the Lord, and if possible, have something fresh. And so in Leviticus chapter 23, which is about as, I mean, that's, if anything, if there's anything more obscure than the book of Numbers, it's Leviticus. So in Leviticus chapter 23, uh, I want to read the whole chapter. And all that I've said before has gone just to introduce that. And if you're, this is your first time, you're going to look at that and go, what? Wow. What? Wow. But I can't help it. I can't go back and justify all this and give you all the details. It's just not possible. Uh, not in one hour. So Leviticus chapter 23, it's like, I, w I wish so much that I could make everybody know what I know and, and feel what I feel and feel the excitement of the Lord even reading Leviticus, even reading Numbers, if, and feel that I know that I know that I know when I, when I look in these passages that are so obtuse, so thick, so dull, that if I look, I, I, I'm going to find jewels that he's put there. He's put there for me. He's put there for you. He's put there for these days. And, and so the thing about Seventh-day Sabbath, which was certainly Sabbath of the Old Testament, and, and you know, there's not a, what we have to remember, even if you're, if you're a Seventh-day keeper or if you worship on Sunday, remember the New Testament is not a new Old Testament. The Old Testament was a new, was a law that was not, 
in existence until Moses gave it. And it's incredible. It's awesome. The Torah is perfect. And yet when, when the new covenant came in, it's kind of like it swallowed up the Old Testament. It is not that. And there's this command to observe Sabbath that starts when the sun goes down on Friday, the sun goes down on Saturday. And you can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do this. And, uh, you know, Jesus was always getting crossways with that uh, on, a, on a regular basis. But I, with that in mind and how we changed to Sabbath to Sunday, and, you know, I've had a million people tell me, well, look, uh, Sunday, there's nowhere in the Bible that it says um, – that it says change over to Sunday, uh, and yet it's it's pretty clear in the Bible that they call it the Lord's Day, and they met on the Lord's Day, and the Lord's Day was the first day of the week. It was the eighth day of the week or the first day of the week. So why, why? you know, you don't find the word Sunday in the Bible. Well, as a matter of fact, you don't find the word Saturday either. You know, you find the word Sabbath, but you don't find the word Saturday. You don't find the word Sunday. But what is here, if, if God really intended for us to shift over to Sunday, he is, he's not going to say, thou shalt do Sunday after Jesus rises from the dead. That's just not his way. It's not a new old covenant. If that's what's going to happen, he's not going to say that. But he is God, and long before Moses ever put pen to paper, he knew all this was coming down. And if he's in this, and if, you know, there are those who say Sunday's satanic and Sunday's from the devil and Sunday's worshiping, you know, the sun God. Well, you know, Saturday's worshiping Saturn. That's another God. That's the devil. Anyway, if that's really the Lord, his footprints will be here leading in that direction, but it won't be a new Old Testament. And I've already covered some of this before, but I have seen some new stuff in the last 36 hours that I've never seen before. And tonight's going to be thick stuff. Tonight's uh, going to separate the men from the boys. It's going to separate the hungry from those that are not hungry. But this is awesome stuff. Uh, I want everybody, and that's that is my goal. That if you would all be teachers, and and I, I want the Lord to expand this to where there's millions that will be teachers and will know this stuff and know it like I know it. This is not an accident, y'all. This is like the law. This is important, like the law of gravity. This is like the laws of physics. This is the word of God. No, Le Leviticus chapter twenty-three. It's kind of like, oh no, not Leviticus, and not chapter twenty-three. You know, no, it's it's important. It's important. Like all the laws of physics, Numbers, Leviticus 23 is incredible. God actually wrote it, and he's put some stuff there. Just like that, that was a mystery. And it was really there. Let me tell you all this. Today, I ordered two more cases of my book called The Big Picture from the, the, the uh, guy that published it. This is a morning star, Big Joiner. So there's always um, a different person answering the phone to take your order. And anyway, I was talking to this lady, Renee. It's my first time to talk to her. And I kind of had to talk her through the process of author's discount and stuff. So um, as I was talking to her, because she's a prophetic person, because she works at Morningstar, I began to give her a little quick rundown about 273 being – in the book of numbers and this and this and she was kind of like uh-huh yeah uh-huh she was getting it but she she wasn't going oh my gosh but she was kind of getting it and she says okay well uh when we get your when the order ships we'll send you out a notification by text and a confirmation number and all that kind of stuff well about three o'clock i got a text from her and it says you know, the, your cases of, of books is shipped, and here's your confirmation number. And the first three digits, <laughs> and the first three digits was 273. 
And I said, oh. So I called her back and I said, okay, I got my confirmation, my confirmation, get this, my confirmation number. The first three digits, 273. She said, yeah, that's right. I looked at it and, she, and I couldn't get it. It's 273. She says, yeah, 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 yeah. Because she was used to doing that kind of paperwork stuff. That's right. I says, Renee, do you remember what we talked about in Numbers chapter 3, verse 46? The number, she goes, oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How'd you do that? You know, <laughs> how'd you make that come out of it? I said, look, I don't know. You're supposed to take this seriously is all I can say. So anyway, that happened today. Uh, it is, it, you know, it's not up. It's just that God wants when he, to do what he wants to do. And when he wants to do it, he's going to do it. When he, and he can pull all the strings in the world. Okay, chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed feasts, the appointed feasts of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. And at first he talks about the, we went over this about six months ago or something, but I've got to go through this to get to the part of the new part. And first he talks about the weekly calendar. There's a weekly calendar. Okay. It's every seven days. Then there is a lunar calendar that is about every 29 and a half days. Okay, it's it's like it's from new moon to new moon. Okay, new moon is when you get the little sliver on the right side. The old moon is the little sliver fingernails on the left side. The, the next night it shifts over, and that's the new moon. And you start counting, and it's about on average about twenty nine and a half days. Um, that that's from new moon to new moon. <laughs> I got to stop and tell you this. So that. <laughs> Help me, Lord. The lunar, the, the, the weekly calendars, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. Okay. But the new moon clicks over about, it's kind of, you, you can't really predict it unless you got a computer and they can now. And so they had to wait until they had two witnesses in Israel that could see the new moon shifted over to the right side. And then they would, the high priest would declare, you got a new, a new moon start, new month. And then, of course, there is an annual cycle that the Lord is in control of about the solar year, which is 365.244 days a year. And God has got all that perfectly, perfectly meshed. And it's all, it seems, hidden in 273, believe it or not. Anyway, what you, go, you may have a hard time grasping this. But if you look at the moon, from new moon to new moon is like I say, 29 and a half days. But actually, how, how long does it take the moon to go around the earth? And that's not going to be from same phase to same phase because it, it's, it's a little different. It's a little shorter for the rotation. Y'all, it actually takes 27.3 days <laughs> for the moon to go around the earth. Now from phase to phase, it's 29 and a half from new moon to new moon on average. But the actual moon's rotation itself is 27.3. Okay, there's another one, okay? I can't help it. I didn't make this up. Okay, so the first calendar he talks about is the seven day calendar. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh is a Sabbath rest, the day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work wherever you live. It is a Sabbath to the Lord. And then he starts talking about the lunar calendar. And this is the kind of stuff people dread reading, but y'all lean into this because you're going to have to lean into this and want to see this to see this. Okay, so, but basically we got this weekly calendar going on and God's got the lunar thing going on and he's got the solar thing going on and he's working them all together. Okay. These are the Lord's appointed feasts, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. Verse five, the Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. Okay. That month is Nisan. It's in the spring. It's March, late March, early April, 
around in there, depending on when the new moon starts. And it, that's the reason it shifts, because there's not an exact number of new of moons in a 365-day year. Okay. So on the 13th, 14th day of the first month, month of Nisan, um, that's car, right? <laughs> uh, you, that is Passover, and you're familiar with Passover. And it doesn't say that Passover is specifically a Sabbath here, Sabbath in that that you have to rest. Do you understand? There is a Sabbath every week that is Saturday, the seventh day, but there are these special Sabbaths that the Lord commands them within the holidays of Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. So you're going to see these extra Sabbaths that are specially commanded according to the lunar calendar, not the weekly calendar. So on the 15th day, that's the next day after Passover, okay? Jesus is crucified on, on uh, Passover. Then the next day is the 15th day of the month. On the 15th day of the month, the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread begins for seven days. You must eat bread made without yeast, and on the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. For seven days, present an offering made to the Lord by fire, and on the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. All right, now that's, that's, the board's just not big enough, brother. What, what, why can't you get me a big board? Okay, let's see. So, all right, so the 14th of the first month, okay, is, is Passover. And, uh, and then on the 15th, the Feast of Unleavened Bread begins, and it is a Sabbath. It is a commanded Sabbath, even though it's, most of the time it's not going to fall on Saturday, okay? But the 15th through the 21st is a week, okay? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's a, that is a seven days. And the 21st day is also a Sabbath. So think about this. He's, he's making in this week here, the first day of the week of this week is Sabbath, and the seventh day is Sabbath. Think about that. The seventh in, in the old covenant, the seventh day was Sabbath, but here you're seeing kind of a little glimpse of a of a week. Now, this is not the calendar week. This Passover, y'all try to get this. Passover is not going to fall on Friday or Sunday or Saturday. It's going to fall on a different day every year it's going to rotate around and so will the 15th you know the first the, when they see the new moon they start counting that's day one and day 14 is passover okay so you kind of have to get that in mind that you got this seven day calendar going on at the same time this lunar calendar going on and it takes god to, <clears throat> to organize those things <clears throat> now the lord said to moses speak as verse nine Speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land, I'm going, I'm going to give you and reap its harvest. Bring the priest, the sheaf of the first grain of you, you harvest. Remember the sheaves of, of, uh, of Joseph, that his brother's sheaves fell down before him, right? Okay. A sheaf is about three inches in diameter, tied up. Okay. They'd bind them up like, reach out, get a bunch together, and they'd cut them, and they'd tie them together and lay them down, and then they would come back later, the people with the wagon, and load them. You see what I'm saying? So that was a sheaf. But the first person in the whole country, nobody knew who it was going to be, that got a ripe sheaf of grain and could get to the high priest first, he was supposed to do that, and then that was going to be the first sheaf, first fruits for the whole country. It might be George, it might be Sam, it might be Bill, and depending on where you planted, when you planted, what kind of weather you got, you know, right now the wheat is out there. Got a little rain yesterday. Didn't hurt it, but if we get rain uh, on it two weeks from now, it, it will it'll, it'll hurt it. But anyway, it's got to get ripe to where you can make bread out of it. And so the first person to get to the high, per, you know, it's kind of like a, a contest every year. <clears throat> you got kind of like you won the lottery, and you can get money for it. But it's like you got reputation. I'm the guy that got the first sheaf to the high priest this year. Okay. Um, you bring the sheaf, the first, first grain you harvest, he, that is the high priest, is to wave the sheaf before the Lord so it will be accepted on your behalf. 
the priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. Okay, now this is a picture of Christ. What is the day after the Sabbath in our terms? What's the day after Saturday on our terms? It's, it's Sunday. The day after Sabbath is Sunday. So the first, Jesus rose on what day of the week? Sunday. On the particular day, year he died, you know, he, he was dead for three days, and he rose from the dead, and he rose on the first day of the week. <clears throat> okay? He rose on Sunday, the day after. It, go, it goes to the sp specifics here of making this um, the day after the Sabbath. Now, think about this, y'all. What it's going to say here is even if the, the farmer brought this sheaf of grain on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, the high priest couldn't take it and wave it until the very next, whenever the next day after Sunday happened. He had to hold on to it, and then on Sunday, he had to wave it. What was he doing? He's prophesying Jesus is the first fruits. He's the first fruits from the dead. Several times in the New Testament, he's referred to as the first fruits. The priest was prophesying that the Messiah would be the first fruits from the dead and he would rise on Sunday. He is to wave the sheep for the Lord and it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. Verse 12, on the day you wave the sheep, you must sacrifice a burnt offering to the Lord, a lamb a year old without defect, together with its grain offering, two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made to the Lord by fire, a pleasing aroma, and its drink offering, about a, a, quarter, of a quarter hen of wine. Okay, do you understand that when you, in chapter 15, okay, chapter 15 is where, I mean, all this boring numbers here, with a lamb you sacrifice a tenth of effort of flour, a quarter hen of oil, and a quarter hen of wine. And then this, this right here, this, so this is the lamb. And if you did, they didn't do a ram here, they just did a lamb. But here's a ram, and here's the bull, okay? And, ordinary, and if you look in chapter 15, it, it lists separately a tenth of F of flour. It's a solid. That's weight. You know, weight and volume is different things. You know, unfortunately, in English, we have fluid ounces and weight ounces, okay? But this was weight, tenth F of flour, dry weight. And then, but this, this oil was volume. And they're listed separately. But here, when it's a picture of the resurrection of Jesus, these, this one, the, the, these two are listed together. And this, the, the, the flower represents the word of God, the bread, and the oil represents the Holy Spirit. And after Jesus rose from the dead, everybody could look at the bread and, and the spirit could say, Bingo. This is that. And when it lists them here, it puts these two together, the oil, the flour and the oil. They're already mixed together, and it says two-tenths of an ephah. It don't give you any volume. It gives you weight. These are mixed together here. And then it says a quarter hen of wine. And that's like a picture after the Holy Spirit, after Jesus rises from the dead, the Holy Spirit can make the, take the Bible, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit, and they're, they're one thing. It's one thing. It's no longer two separate things. It's one thing I can just shout. <laughs> but every day, we need to come before the Lord, enter the most holy, and receive the blood of Jesus because we are sinful people, and we need the blood of Jesus and repentance. Don't, and amen, somebody shout me down. We need the blood applied every day. And that's a separate thing from the flour and the oil together. Now let me show you something else. When the Lord was first showing this stuff to us about uh, in 2017, February, matter of fact, Valentine's Day, 2017, I felt led to go down to the river, which I almost never do. I went down the Tennessee River and I walked, and I was walking along, and it was the water was down. It's kind of like a beach thing when the water's down. It's kind of nice. And, and you find all kind of stuff. It's amazing what washes up. You wouldn't think steel would wash up. you think it'd go to the bottom of the river, but it don't. Amazing stuff. Anyway, I was walking along, and I turned around to go back, and the Holy Spirit says, turn around. You had not got there yet. And so I went another 50 feet, 
and there was this wine bottle, an old wine bottle in the edge of the water there, about half full of water, you know how they float, you know. This was, it was quite old. It says dispose of properly, not to be re refilled. And when I reached to pick it up, the Holy Spirit said, some people get a message in a bottle, but you're going to get a message on a bottle. And there on the bottom of this bottle, it says 273. The wine, and we were studying about the wine, the, the, the flour, the oil, and the wine, and all together, and the 270 is what the church needs. And, and anybody thinks I've lost my marbles, I hadn't. <laughs> I still got a few. Now, and I'm, I'm going to pass this around and let you guys who are here, yeah, just so y'all won't be wondering, is that really there? <clears throat> is that really there? So anyway, uh, so I love you, Jesus. He has a lot of fun with me. So y'all look at that. You know, the, the, the quarter handle wine is separate, but the fl flour and the oil are, are together there. None of this is random. All right, verse 15, 23, 15, Feast of Weeks. Feast of Weeks, that's, that's Pentecost. And it's called Feast of Weeks because it's seven weeks after, it's seven weeks after the, the, uh, the uh, sheaf is waved, the first fruits is waved. You count off seven, you had, and it had to start on a Sunday and it had to finish on a Sunday. So from Sunday to Sunday, it's actually seven to seven is 49. That's seven, that's seven weeks plus a day because it's from Sunday to Sunday. So it's 50 days. That's what Pentecost refers to the 50. Pentecost means 50. So it's called, you know, Pentecost. It's called Feast of Weeks. So from the day after the Sabbath, okay, the day after the Sabbath is Sunday, the day you brought the sheaf of the way we offering count. And that's the, when the high priest brings it. The farmer bring, may bring it on a Monday, but the high priest brings it before the Lord on a Sunday. And it says, oh, verse 16, count off 50 days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Again, that's, the, that's another word for that Sunday. And then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. See, Sunday there is being mentioned twice. I mean, they didn't have the word Sunday. But it's what we call Sunday, the first day of the week what the Bible calls the first day of the week. So Sunday is there twice, and he's making after Passover, which can happen on any day of the week, but after Passover is done, Jesus is risen from the dead. The picture is of Sunday to Sunday. You probably haven't ever heard this. But I've never heard a, a cogent teaching in the pulpit justifying anything about Sunday being in the Bible, but it's here. And that's not the only time it's here, and it's, but it's not a new Old Testament. From wherever you live, bring two loaves of, made of two tenths of an ephah of flour, okay, baked with yeast as a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. Now this is on the day of Pentecost. <clears throat> so these two, oh, you got these two loaves Okay, the, 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 the uh, board's just not big enough. So you, you need to bring two, two <laughs> some people complain, you hung them with a new rope. Okay, so it's two loaves of bread, okay? You bring two loaves of bread, uh, and then present with this bread seven male lambs, each a year old without defect, Okay, and and a one young bull and two rams. Well, pardon me for saying so, but the young bull, the young bull and the rams are together. The seven are together, and the one bull and two rams are together. And I say that's three. Okay, and um, <clears throat> there will be a burnt offering to the Lord together with a grain offering and drink offering and offering made by fire. That's the stuff that I mentioned before, these fractions over here. An aroma pretty pleasing to the Lord. Then sacrifice one male goat for a sin offering and two lambs, each a year old for a fellowship offering. So that's the fellowship offering is a group, and there's three of them. 
So there you got 273 plus 3 again. Okay. The priest is to wave the two lambs before the Lord as a wave offering together with the bread of the first fruits. They're a sacred offering to the Lord for the priest. On the same day, you are to proclaim a sacred assembly and do no regular work. So this is Pentecost. Pentecost is a Sabbath. Okay. Uh, it's been a lasting ordinance. Okay. So that's the third Sabbath. Uh, there's two there in association with unleavened bread. Beginning and the end of unleavened bread, there's, there's a Sabbath on either end. It doesn't say that the day you wave the, uh, the sheaf, which has had to be a Sunday, but it didn't have to be a day of not working. It doesn't say that. Uh, but there's an actual Sabbath don't work, and it's on a Sunday. Again, here in verse 21. And something that's kind of interesting, right in the middle of this, it seems totally out of place. Think about this. When you reap the harvest of your lamb, do not reap the very edges of the field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am Yahweh, your God. And I looked at that and I go, okay, God. Why did you have to drop that in there? And that seems kind of, why is that there? But I promise you this, it's there for a reason. It's perfect. It is perfect. And if you ask me what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to me about that verse, He's saying, be merciful in your application of all this stuff. Don't bind everybody strictly to the letter of the law and be legalistic. Be generous in your application of these things because there'll be aliens that don't have a clue about the law of Moses. And there'll be poor people who will be in such dire straits that they're going to have needs and you need to be merciful. I think that is there for a reason and that's part of the reason. I say that is, is I believe that's my insight. Okay, now, that, so that's, that's Pentecost and you may know Pentecost is usually around the 1st of June. Um, that's when you harvest the wheat. And that's we're coming up on that season right now. In fact, in fact, our home, not far from our home, almost across the fence from our our ranch, is a field of wheat right now. It's not mine; it's our neighbor's. Okay, but then you 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 drop over to around the end of September, um, the end of the beginning of October, and the fall feasts happen. It's really one fall feast with all these subsections. And in this, this I've never, there's something I've never seen until the last 36 hours. I want to declare to you a, a picture that I believe the Lord is showing me that, it, you know, it, it's how huge the footprints of God are. Okay. Um, oh, my goodness. I might use it my time. Okay. Verse 23, the Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly co commemorated with the trumpet blast. That's called Rosh Hashanah and do no regular work. So it is a, it is a Sabbath, but it's not on any particular day of the week. It's not necessarily on a Saturday or a Sunday or a Monday or a Tuesday. It is based on the lunar calendar. And this is Tishri. This is the seventh month. It's the first day of the seventh month. Um, do no regular work. Present an offering to the Lord. And then he goes in, and, uh, you know, 10 days later is the day of atonement. It's supposed to be kind of like the holiest day of the year. It's when the high priest went into the most holy and he carried blood and, and to atone for the whole nation. It was considered the holiest day of the year. And it was a super Sabbath. Not only were you not supposed to work, you're supposed to deny yourselves, which meant no, no sexual relations. And also it was one of the commanded fasts. There weren't many 
fasts commanded in the Bible. There were more feasts, but that day was commanded to fast everything, fast marital relations, fast food for 24 hours. And so it was a super Sabbath that may or may not fall on Saturday or Sunday, but it is a, a special Sabbath. Now, what I, uh, I want to say about that, and I think the Lord showed me this today, and, and I may not be the only person that knows this, but I, I've never heard anybody else say it, but, you know, no telling. This, this is really, in a way, it's kind of evident once you see it. But I, I, not many of us look at this calendar realizing what we're looking at. Do you understand that you talk that the first day of the month is in the spring? It's the first day of Tishri. It's around end of March, end of April. But do you know that it wasn't? That wasn't always the first month. Moses is told by God in Exodus twelve. I'm running out of time. I can't. We don't turn over there and read it. Moses is told from now on. This used to be your seventh month. And it was in the springtime. This used to be your seventh month, but from now on, it's your first month. And, and that's the reason sometimes you say the new year is in the fall. That's when the fiscal year starts, right? That was the calendar of Noah. Noah was supposedly born on Rosh Hashanah or the, uh, the, the first day of the seventh month, which used to be the first day of the first month in the fall, around the end of September, around the end of October. The old calendar of Noah, the first day was in the fall, but Moses, God gives him a new calendar, chapter 12, Exodus, and the first day is in the spring, and the first day, the first month is what used to be the seventh month. The first month is what used to be the seventh month. Do you get that? There is, a, there is a precedent, in a sense, for changing the calendar and changing from the seventh to the first. It's not days. It's months. But there was a total, complete change in the calendar when this monumental thing happened called the Exodus, the Passover, the children of Israel leaving Egypt. Uh, e uh, leaving Egypt, the birth of a nation. Do you understand? It was so big, they changed the calendar. God changed the calendar. But is that any bigger than Jesus rising from the dead? No. But I'm not saying the New Testament is a new Old Testament. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Sunday, you know, starts at Saturday night at 6 o'clock or, or anything like that. I'm saying it is entering into a rest. And you're entering into Christ because he rose from the dead, having done the greatest work of all. He rose from the dead on the first day of the week. And there it was the purpose of God for there to be a first day worship, but not a legalistic thing. It's not, it's not Sabbath in the same sense. And yet you see these first day of the week Sabbaths repeatedly here. Now, let me hurry to go on through here. Uh, <clears throat> verse 33, the Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, on the 15th day of the seventh month, the Lord's Feast of Tabernacles begins. Now, let me try to say this right here. Uh, okay, they can see me over here. Okay. Okay, so on the first day of the seventh month, uh, on the first day, that's Rosh Hashanah. Call it RH. Okay, on the 10th day, and these are without respect with, with calendar days, that just whenever the, there's a lunar thing. This is the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Okay, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. And then there's, and that's when you find out if your sins are going to be forgiven. Everybody's supposed to hold a breath on that day. On that day in Israel, the cars don't even run, everybody stops. And in 1973, that's the, the day that all the Arab nations got together and attacked Israel. Bad move. But then 15 days later, there's a special Sabbath that starts 
a week and they have a party because they're celebrating that God's forgiven them and they're having a party. This is the biggest party of the whole year. And so the 15th day is a special Sabbath and the 21st day is a special Sabbath. And then it says, and on the eighth day, let me squeeze that in there. See, this board's just not big enough. On the 22nd day, in other words, the eighth day, this is the first day of the week. So this is going to be the first day of the week. If the 15th is the first, is a uh, Saturday or whatever, Sunday or whatever, then so will the 22nd. But what he's saying is the first and the eighth will always be Sabbaths. So, so you've got here hidden in between the lines a reference to the first day of the week and the eighth day of the week, which is the first day of the week, because at the end of the holidays, being both being Sabbaths. Again, that's not that that is kind of like a prophecy in the numbers there about these Sabbaths. And you you have to want to see it to see it. If you've got a vested interest in not seeing this, then you won't. But Anyway, that happened. Um, so I've used up an hour. I hope, I hope it was well spent. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Help us to hunger and thirst after righteousness. We love you and we trust you and we thank you for this awesome book but that it is now mixed. This flower is one-on-one -on -one with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.